Hey guys, Stake here for Games Defined and in this video I'm going to show you how to get rounded edges on your geometry and the best thing is that it's all going to be low poly so we're not actually going to have to add the detail so what we're going to do is we're going to start by drawing a box any size, doesn't matter but I'm just going to do mine at 50 for each um, section. I'm going to put it in the middle just because I like to be neat. Um, and I'm just going to render it and show you what it looks like to start with. So all the edges are sharp and you can see that it, there's only one edge. Well, you know what I mean by just the one edge. And then we're going to right click and convert this to an editable poly. But now we'll go to edge mode and we're going to select all the edges so click and drag around the box or just control A that does the same thing then we're going to come up to chamfer settings and then just change the settings until you get a look that you like and now if we render this F9 you can see we've got nice smooth edges but the problem is if we go to polygon mode control A to select all the faces we've now got 182 polygons which is not really what we want for a low poly cube so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna undo all of this so we're back to the standard cube and then we need to change the renderer from scanline renderer which is default to the mental ray renderer so we're gonna come up to render settings or F10 render setup then if you've got 3ds max 2016 yours will look like this where you can change the renderer up here if not then scroll down to the bottom click assign renderer under production click this box and then select mental ray the mental ray is built into 3ds max so you don't have to worry about buying it it will automatically have it so now we've got the renderer sorted what we're going to do is we're going to press M on the keyboard or just this button up here to get the material editor up and if we go to standard under the standard drop down you'll see the mental ray drop down just click that and then we want arc and design now you can select any template I'm just going to do a pearl finish the color doesn't matter none of these settings matter if we scroll down you'll see special effects you'll have the option for ambient occlusion and round corners so if you just click the box for round corners all the settings become um, editable the fillet sorry the fillet radius this um, this is how round you want the corners to be so the higher this number is the more round the corners are going to be so I'm just going to leave it at 0 0.5 at the minute because that's fairly small but you'll definitely notice that the corners are rounded now all we have to do is just click and drag this material onto the box and now if we render F9 again you'll see that you've got nice rounded edges and we'll just put this up to one centimeter or one whatever your unit setup is and then if we render that again with F9 you'll see that the um, fillet radius is even is even higher so you've got even more of a rounded corner and this is good for some angles but for this angle on these edges or well, this corner it's not very good because you can see the pointed section so if you're going to do it then you're going to need a decent angle so that it doesn't get you know you're not caught out with this effect so the the good thing is that while we see these as edges the computer can also see things as edges that we don't so I'm going to show you what that means if we go to edge mode and then we click these edges to us these are edges and also to the computer these are edges but if we just copy this box make it a copy because we're going to change this and make it smaller just press R on the keyboard or this one here 
what's going to happen is it's going to create an edge where the two objects intersect. Now to, to us this isn't really an edge because if we click one of these boxes you can't click this edge because it doesn't exist but to the computer it's an edge so what it's actually going to do is it's going to round this edge these edges around here where the box intersects the bigger box and if I render this I'll just show you what I mean as you can see already I mean the radius is is a bit too big so I'm just going to put that down to, to give it a better effect just put it down to 0 0.2 no, 0 0.3 now if we render that again gives a really good effect of this box being moulded into this box and not just intersecting this box so if we have a more complex scene or model with multiple parts um, such as this one which is supposed to look like a massive block of chocolate uh, if we zoom in to get a decent angle what we want really to be realistic is for these all to be molded to this one massive block so now if we render that it gives the effect of it being molded and this this would be a lot of polygons if you were to model this um, model the actual detail and even if for example you did did some kind of weird shape of the, the chocolate melting if you were to make a plane and then move everything a little bit further down so it's intersecting the floor then if we wait for this to render yeah something I forgot to actually add you need to apply this material to every single object so now once that's added we're going to zoom in again and we'll give it another render and you can see that now these two objects because um, they intersect it's going to mould this into the floor but say we want different colours all we have to do is if we clone this material just drag it into another uh, slot and just rename it so that we don't get the um, the troubles of everything applying uh, you know all the colors changing just drag that onto the floor now if we render you'll see something slightly different you'll see that it doesn't actually um, blend in to the floor that's because we need to enable something in the settings if, so if we come back down to the rounded corners we need to click blend with other materials and we need to click this on both materials so they both do the same thing so now if we render you'll see that the um, both the objects blend into each other so now I'll just show you something else very quickly while we're on here if we go back to the material editor come up to ambient occlusion if we just tick this what this will do is it will add a soft shadow so what we need to do next is add a light source to cast the shadows so just come over to lights under the drop down just click standard and then click a skylight um, put it anywhere because it will do the same job wherever you are so now if we render you'll see nice soft shadows you can see it it's there already so that this that is giving a really nice effect of the ge you know the geometry all being one and applying a nice soft shadow. So this has saved a lot of geometry um, detail and a lot of time, and you're getting a really good effect out of it. So if I just make this bigger, well, it's it's already big enough. Scale it at 100, and then just render this again, just so you can see the whole object now it's fully rendered you can see the effect that it gives so this is a really simple but powerful tool that can save a lot of um, processing power so that's 
it for this tutorial leave a like and if you have any questions just leave a comment and subscribe for more videos like this thanks for watching Thank <laughs> you.